Happy 2021, one and all. Um, welcome to uh, my the the films of 2020. I used to do these every year. I would talk about like all the movies I watched, and I stopped because I watch a lot of fucking movies. So I'm like, this is too time consuming. I can't talk about all of the because it'd be like two hour and a half long videos where I talked about all the movies I saw and. It's 2020 now. There weren't as many movies, so I, I feel a little more comfortable talking about all the movies of 2020 today. Uh, we'll go from worst to best. I'll try to be brief with all of these, especially the first two, because the first two are movies I want to review in the future. The worst movie I saw all year was A Wrestling Christmas Miracle. That's right, there's kind of a sequel to A Karate Christmas Miracle. It's the same actors playing different characters in this one, so it's not a direct sequel, but it is very much in the spirit of Karate Christmas Miracle. And I'm going to argue that it is worse than Karate Christmas Miracle, because Karate Christmas Mir Miracle was, like, bizarre and, like, like, freaky, weird, crazy shit going on. Wrestling Christmas Miracle is pretty tame in comparison. And it's also just not very good. Uh, don't want to give away too much, because I probably will review it this upcoming Christmas, since I reviewed Karate Christmas Miracle. Only makes sense. The one thing I'll say, the plot in Karate Christmas Miracle at least revolves around karate. You know, kid has to get his black belt before Christmas. In a wrestling Christmas Miracle, wrestling is barely... Wrestling has nothing to do with the plot. Like, you could take wrestling out of this movie, and it'd be pretty much the same. I uh, don't want to spoil too much since I might review it, but just so you're aware, the worst 2020 movie I saw was A Wrestling Christmas Miracle. A step above Wrestling Christmas Miracle, we have Assassin 33 AD, which is a Christian time travel movie. And it's exactly as fucking wild as you think it is. Cat, get off the counter. You're on thin fucking ice, buddy. Yeah, uh, Assassin 33 AD is fucking buck wild. Like, it's... It, this has review written all over it. <laughs> this is... It's people, people gotta know. People gotta know about Assassin 33 AD. It's so fucking amazing. My fucking, like normie college friends watched this and they're like oh we watched this movie 33 AD Assassin 33 AD you gotta watch it and, and I'm like yeah all right and man they were right I'm I'm proud of them because you know the, these are the guys that like I had to show Troll 2 and The Room and Cool Cat to they don't know anything about movies and then now they're they're coming to me with recommendations and they're good recommendations. I, I'm so proud of them. I won't say too much about the plot of Assassin 33 AD, since again, I'm I'm probably gonna review this like very soon, like February, March, maybe April, April at the latest. I'm gonna review Assassin 33 AD because it's f fucking wild. I will say uh, it it's a Christian movie. I don't think it's pure flicks, but it's it's very much in that vein of pure flicks movies. But unlike garbage like God's Not Dead or or old fashioned or like the 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 one where the 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 guy sees his son in heaven or whatever, I didn't watch that one. It's Kevin Sorbo. It's always fucking Kevin Sorbo. Um. Unlike those films, Assassin 33 AD tries. <laughs> like, the cinematography's decent. There's pretty decent effects, given that it's like... It's obviously a pretty low-budget film. But the, the effects are decent. They're not the worst thing in the world. Not that there's really any special effects in God's Not Dead at all. But, <laughs> like, y y you compare the two and it's like, Assassin 33 AD... Movie that is trying. God's Not Dead, lame, boring. No one cared about this movie. 
it's it, it's it's Christian persecution complex for quick cash. I don't know, Assassin 33 AD. It's hilarious. Watch it. I love it. Moving on to a film I will not be reviewing, Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I saw it in theaters. I showed up to the theater drunk, bought a beer, snuck in another beer. So I was pretty drunk while I was watching this movie. I was also tweeting the whole thing in the theater, and no one seemed to mind. That's probably that's probably the most nuisance I have ever been in a theater. But it's fucking Sonic. Who cares? Who cares about fucking Sonic? Like, I wouldn't do that normally. But it was Sonic. And, like, if someone had gotten on to me about the phone thing, I'd, uh, I'd uh, you know. But I kept, you know, turn the brightness down. Keep it, like, low. Texting from my pocket. Tweeting from my pocket, excuse me. I was tweeting during the movie. I made I made a uh, Sonic movie predictions bingo, and I got it pretty handily. I I I had like someone brings up the '90s in the bottom left corner. If I had gotten that, I'd have had like five bingos. But I I did get bingo more than once. <laughs> to be fair, some of these were f- like kind of gimmies. Like I, I had a joke about James Marsden's career like falling apart <laughs> and and one of them was in the trailer it's the same fucking plot from smurfs and master of the universe i hate that plot so much it's like oh we have this crazy fantasy character who lives in this crazy fantasy world what should we do with them in the movie i know send them to the boring real world what's the point what? What? Why? Why do that plot? I don't. I don't care about the real world. I don't want to see Sonic in the real world. I want to see Sonic in the Sonic world. That it, it's a plot that bothers me a lot because it happens so much. Like I don't want to see the Smurfs in New York. I want to see the Smurfs in Smurfville. I don't want to see He Man in New York. I want to see He Man in. Where does he live? Eternia. You know, He-Man world. I don't know, I hate the plot. The plot is stupid. I was surprised how many children were in the audience at Sonic. Like, it seemed like there were at least a couple people there unironically. Um, Because there's a lot of stuff I laughed at that no one else did. There's a point where, like, Robotnik is like, Well, let me show you my egg sack. And I'm like... I died laughing, and no one else thought it was funny. I was the only one laughing at that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of what you expect from Sonic. I will say, um, the redesign, I think, kinda saved the movie. Cause it's not even that bad. It's, it's subpar, but it's like, nah. This is what I expected from a Sonic movie. And I feel like if he had that original ugly design, like everyone's like, oh, it's not going to be funny. He doesn't have the ugly design. I think the ugly design is funny in a trailer. I don't think it would work for a two-hour movie. That's probably only an hour and a half. But you know what I mean. Like, I I would not want to sit through a full-length movie with ugly Sonic. You know? It's, It's... much easier to watch with the less ugly Sonic. At the beginning of the year, I went to see Parasite in theaters, and I am clinging to that because without Parasite, Sonic was the only movie I saw in theaters this year. <laughs> Fucking pandemic. I miss theaters. I miss going to the theater. I have, I think it's right here actually. I have an AMC gift card I got last Christmas. I uh, I used it on Parasite, and I haven't been able to use it since. Yeah, I don't know. Sonic movie. Predictable. Exactly what I expected. But not, like, the worst thing ever. Like, it's... Subpar. That's it. It's It's not even... Like, there's funny parts. Don't get me wrong. 
there's some funny parts in there. But it's like... I don't know. It's it's not even something I can get that worked up about. Like, there was no chance in hell of a Sonic movie ever being good. And while I'm sure you could make a Sonic movie better than this, it you could also make a Sonic movie much, much worse than this. So... Yeah, it's not great, but... Eh. Uh, next up on the list is a film called Scare Package. It's, uh, I think it's a Shudder original. Um, it, it sort of did the indie circuit. I think, I think it actually did the indie circuit in 2019, but it debuted this year on Shudder. On Joe Bob's The Last Drive-In. I like Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, it's, especially his new show. His new show is, like, way better than the stuff he's done previous. Scare Package, it's a, like, meta-jokey comedy horror anthology movie. Um, and like most horror anthologies, the good bits are dragged down by the bad bits. There are, there are very few horror anthologies where I think all of them are good. Um, From Beyond the Grave, and that might be it. That might be it. Asylum's pretty good, too. I like Asylum, but... I don't know. Anthology horror is a hard thing to deal with, because it's like, well, these bits were really good, but then this one wasn't very good, and I, I very much feel that way about Scare Package. But it's almost double for Scare Package, because there's seven segments, which is entirely too many. Because there's a couple segments I'm like, cut this segment, cut this segment, make this segment longer. Uh, very specifically, the one they should have made longer is So Much To Do. Um, it was pretty decent, but it, like, it ended so abruptly, and I'm like, you could have cut, like, the two bad ones and left this in. So let's, let's go through these segments, because there was Cold Open was the first segment, and, uh... It's, it's fucking Cabin in the Woods. You know, it's the same joke as, uh, or no, no, the opening segment is Tucker and Dale versus Evil. It's, it's the same joke as Tucker and Dale versus Evil. You know, we've seen it a hundred times. Wasn't into it. Uh, after that, there was One Time in the Woods, which is hilarious. I loved One Time in the Woods. That and one of the other ones almost make it worth a watch. Almost. Then there was Mister, which I was kind of enjoying. It's like, like this guy goes to like this weird men's rights activist thing, and it's, it's kind of funny, because they're like making fun of men's rights activists, and then they're like, oh, come on, we got a thing to, that we do together. And then they're all werewolves. And I thought the joke was that they were wearing bad werewolf costumes and pretending to be werewolves. But then the movie just treats it like they're actually real werewolves. And I'm like, what the fuck? But the costumes are so bad. They're awful costumes. And then, and then the segment kind of ends anticlimactically. I wasn't into it. Like, it, it started off solid... And the ending kind of fucked it for me. And the really lame werewolf costumes. Because it's not even like this is a cheap movie. Like, there's pl like that's the only thing I can complain about in terms of, like, props and costumes in this movie. It looks really good other than those werewolf costumes. They're really ugly costumes. Girls' Night Out of Body, I just didn't get. This is, this is the one you should cut. Like, if it, when you're cutting segments, Girls' Night Out of Body didn't make a lick of sense. Wasn't even, like, fun weird. It was just... It was just there, taking up space that could have been used by a better segment. Then there was The Night He Came Back Again Part 4, The Final Kill. Another really hilarious one. This one and One Time in the Woods are the ones that, like... 
I could almost recommend the whole film based on those two segments. Okay, like, if you've got Shudder, find Scare Package and watch just those segments. Just One Time in the Woods and The Night He Came Back Again Part 4. Those are the two really good segments. Then there was So Much to Do, which is the one I think needed more time. Like, it needed to be longer. Spend longer on this one, cut Mr., Cut Girls' Night Out of Body. Make this a longer segment. Um, it was directed, interestingly enough, by Baron Vaughn, uh, who plays Tom Servo in MST3K The Return, which I guess is cancelled now. They confirmed that this year. I might I might do a video on like the, the supplemental MST3K material. Like, like uh, the last season, and then like the live show and the comic book. I just, I just got the comic. So, um, I might, I might do, like, an MST, another MST3K video. Just to, like, cover everything that's come out since my last one. Yeah, so much to do. It was pretty good, but I wished, I wished it had a little more room to breathe. And then the last one was Horror Hypothesis, which is Cabin in the Woods. It's just fucking Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods already exists. And it's a great movie. I love it. I know there's some people in my audience that don't like it, but I enjoy it. But it's like, Kevin in the Woods already did this, like, almost ten years ago now. You're not clever or original. Stop. <laughs> but then there's uh, wraparound segments. Like, like the framing device of the movie is, like, these guys in a uh, video rental store. Um... I think the interiors might be Vulcan Video in Austin, Texas. Because I know it was filmed in Austin. And they it looks a lot like Vulcan Video. Which is the place I discovered 9 minutes and 10 minutes. Yeah, so I, I liked the wraparound segments. I, li I liked the uh, framing device. And I liked... I really liked two of the segments, and I was okay with one other segment. So it's like, yeah, it's a mixed bag, and like, way more of a mixed bag than usual for horror anthologies. I I, I don't know that I recommend it that strongly. It, if you want to skip around and just watch like the three segments I liked, they're funny. They're really good. I wish the other segments were as good as those. Uh, up next on the list is Christopher Nolan's Tenet, um, which I did not see in theaters like Christopher Nolan wanted me to. I waited till it came to home media. Tenet... My feelings on Tenet are very mixed, and they were pretty much mixed the whole movie. Because there's a lot of stuff I like, and then there's a lot of stuff that's like, okay, what's going on here? And I, I it felt like I was spent... I spent the whole movie waiting for it to just click and it never clicked like it it never became something better right it 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 was exactly the same the whole movie there's not even like there's not really even like a twist or anything there's kind of a twist but it's like it's kind of just for, for as much as they do like the wild time travel bullshit it's kind of a straightforward action movie just with like a bizarre sci-fi concept in there it reminds me a lot of inception uh obviously it's christopher nolan doing like a wild sci-fi concept like inception but inception i think is better in basically every way like because if if you pay attention to inception it's not hard to figure out. On the other hand, if you if you didn't know what was going on in Tenet, I couldn't blame you. Because I'm not fully sure I understand everything that happened. Like, I was following along with the plot, and then... Somewhere near the end, it, it kind of lost me. Especially, like... Especially, like, there's this big climax. It's, it's like a battle... Um, with, with, like, two 
armies going it. There's like an army going forward in time and an army going backward in time. And I have no clue which what shots are going forward and which shots are going backward. Because it's all the same. It's it's like there's no way to know which which parts are the frontwards parts and which parts are the backwards parts. It just it it doesn't make sense. It's it's a really hard action scene to try to follow. And that's on top of like I get the concept, but it raises so many fucking questions. Right? Like, like, there's a scene where there's, like, a building and, like, the bottom half of it is blown up. And, like, the forward-going people blow up the top half and the backward-going people blow up the bottom half. So, like, when you first see it, it's just the top and the bottom's destroyed. And then the bottom rebuilds and the top gets destroyed because of the time travel. But it's like, the building had to have been built. Broken, right? Like, like, they find a big piece of concrete with all these backwards going bullets in it. And it's like, did the rock just form with those bullets in it? Have those bullets just always been in that concrete? The concept doesn't really make sense to begin with. And then they fuck around with it, and by the end you're like... Not so sure about this. Not so sure that made sense. But I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in it. I mean, it's Christopher Nolan. He knows how to shoot a movie. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful movie. The action scenes are all great. Um... Like, lots of weird shit going on that looks really cool. Um, music's really good. Uh, it's not Hans Zimmer. It's because Christopher Nolan usually works with Hans Zimmer, but it's someone else this time. Um, but it's, it's still really good music. And, of course, the acting is great. It's, uh, fuck, Denzel Washington's son. He was in Black Klansman, and I didn't realize he was Denzel Washington's son in Black Klansman. And then I saw his name come up in this one, and I'm like, You think he's related to Denzel? Yeah, he's Denzel's son. He's a good actor. Between this and uh, Black Klansman, he's going places. He's going to be in a lot of movies. I look forward to it. I like him. John David Washington. Yeah, good actor. Really good actor. I mean, Denzel's a good actor, so must have rubbed off, you know. Um, Robert Pattinson's in the movie. He's really good. Um, I'm glad we've <laughs> we've all finally come around on Robert Pattinson since Twilight. I've said before, I'll say it again, I can't blame any of the actors in Twilight for their bad performances. Because most of them have proven they can act. Most of them are good actors, but those Twilight movies just fucking destroy your acting ability. Bad direction. That's that's what it comes down to, with bad direction. So, <laughs> but I mean, uh, like Robert Pattinson, and, and Billy Burke, and, and Kristen Stewart, and Anna Kendrick, they've all done good stuff. Why do they suck so much in Twilight? I don't want to totally dissuade anyone from watching Tenet. Uh, I, I know I was kind of down on it, but, like, if you like Christopher Nolan, you'll probably at least find stuff to enjoy about this film. Like, I was not disappointed by it. I'm glad I watched it. I probably won't watch it again. I, maybe once. Maybe once just to see if, like, okay, on a rewatch it makes a little more sense, but... But... If I don't like it the second time, it's I'm probably not gonna watch it anymore after that. It's just it's not my thing, you know? Like there's too much going on. There's too much in this that ultimately doesn't amount to much. I mean, if you don't like Christopher Nolan, this is not gonna be the one that you're gonna get into, you know? 
I think you can pretty easily suss out whether or not you're going to enjoy Tenant. Um, good stuff in there. Not disappointed that I watched it, but not the best thing in the world. And speaking of time travel movies that don't really make much sense, Bill and Ted Face the Music. Um, again, stuff I liked about it, but also stuff I didn't like about it. Very mixed bag. It's not as good as the first two. Let me start with that. I really like the first two. And the third one's like... It's not a disappointment. It's not like, oh, this is like so much worse than those others. But it's like, eh... You know, it's the third movie. <laughs> That's... Especially 25 years later, you're not gonna get a great third movie. Although, I think they've been trying to make Bill and Ted 3 for, like, years now. They, they've started making Bill and Ted 3 in, like, the 90s, and no one would take it until now. Alex Winter still kind of works as Bill, but, like, Keanu has finally gotten over his, like, surfer dude phase, and now he's trying to go back to it, and it kind of doesn't work. <laughs> like, he's got, like, the raspy John Wick voice now, and... Uh, I don't. It it doesn't really work. I like their daughters. I think their daughters are great characters, and I think their daughter's story is more interesting than their own. You know, because their because their story is kind of a lot like the first uh, Bill and Ted. It's just them going through time, finding famous musicians to work with, um, and it's fun. It's I I really enjoy their story. I really enjoy their characters. They're very funny. They because. I don't know. They they're kind of the joke is like they're just Bill and Ted, but they're girls now. It's funny. It works. I like them. They're very charming. Um, I also really like Kristen Schaal as Rufus's daughter. That's I mean choice casting, and she's well written. I like her. I like the character a lot. <laughs> There's a shot where you see like. A hologram of Rufus and it's clearly like a shot from the first Bill and Ted and then it cuts away before he starts saying the stuff that Rufus never said and it is obviously not George Carlin's voice like it is blatantly someone else is doing the Rufus voice but that's like a shot I'll I can ignore that that's fine I don't care um, they pro this is kind of a spoiler Minor spoiler warning, but if you can't figure it out watching the movie yourself, you're kind of dumb. They project really hard, really hard, that the people who are going to sing the song are Bill and Ted's daughters. Like, because uh, the moment, the moment they said Preston Logan, I'm like, oh, it's their, it's going to be their daughters. It's not going to be them. It's going to be their daughters. Like, immediately, immediately, I'm like, it's their daughters. Like, not even a question in my mind that they're going to do this. I, I I thought maybe they'll do, like, some subversion with it. They'll be like, oh, everyone thinks it's going to be their daughters, and then... No, it actually was them the whole time. But no, it's it's exactly what you think it is. I wanted to watch this, I wanted to watch this movie, but I'm like, I can't just get the new Bill and Ted. I don't have... The second one. Because I also really like the second one. And they had this three-pack, and I'm like... But I already have Bill and Ted on Blu-ray. But I'm like... Eh. Get the second one. Get the third one. Makes the, makes the combo pack worth it. I don't think that's out of character for me. To have two copies of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure on Blu-ray. That... That's... That tracks... You know, I've got three fucking Bill and Ted shirts. I'm wearing my Wild Stallions t-shirt right now. That probably didn't come out on the mic. That's going to be, like, way quieter than everything else I said. Yeah, I like Bill and Ted. Uh, Bill and Ted face the music. It is what it is, you know. If you like the other Bill and Ted's, you'll probably like this. You probably feel similarly. Just, like... Yeah, okay. That's... It's it's exactly what you expect out of the third Bill and Ted. Like, there's there's funny moments. There's lots of fun stuff. Lots of fun characters, but... It's, it's a Bill and Ted sequel 25 years later. 
what do you expect? Moving into the movies, I would actually recommend uh, Borat's subsequent movie film. Um, very funny movie. I, I like the original Borat, and I like this one a lot, too. I do wonder how this one is going to age, because the first one was sort of broadly about American politics, and it is, it is sort of focused on, like, Bush-era American politics. So it feels a tad dated, but I feel I feel like the broader statements it was making are like have become more true over time. Actually, I th I think Borat One is more relevant than it's ever been, um, and this one it focuses real heavily on the Trump administration and the COVID virus, and it's like. How well is this gonna age? Are we gonna look back on this in a couple years and be like, ah, this, this is dated. This is really dated. I mean, maybe it can work as like a time capsule. Show what it was like in 2020. Um, I don't know. Watching it in the here and now, I enjoyed it. Maybe down the line I'll be like, okay, yeah, it's, it's dated. It doesn't work as well anymore. But... I mean, it's... I enjoy it now. It's really funny. <laughs> I don't think it's going to stop being funny. That's the thing. Like, the story might feel dated, but it is a funny movie. So, I think it will continue to be funny well into the future. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I don't have that much to say about <laughs> Borat's subsequent movie film. It's not as good as the original. The original's funnier, but it is what it is. Like, I, I thought it was funny. I enjoyed it. Recommended by me. Borat subsequent movie film. It does feel like like they shoehorn in all of the like fan service references right in like the first ten minutes. Cause like in the first ten minutes he does like a my wife joke and a wah wah wee wah joke and uh, he says very nice. Like right at the beginning of the movie it's like alright here's the stuff you want to hear. My wife, very nice. Wa wa we wa. All right, moving on. Just like I, I appreciate that they kind of dumped it all at once. Next up is Color Out of Space, um, with Nicolas Cage, who's fucking amazing in this movie. Like this is some of the best Nick Cage acting in a while. He's kind of, I don't know. He's been on the downslope. I always say there's there's two distinct Nick Cages. There's Nick Cage the actor, who's in movies like Adaptation and and uh, Leaving Las Vegas, and then there's Nick Cage the movie star, who's in films like Face Off and Con Air, and Nick Cage the movie star is washed up. Nick Cage the actor is semi-retired, so. You don't get a lot of good stuff out of him. But, yeah, every now and then, you know, actor Nick Cage comes back. And this feels very much actor Nick Cage. This is... He's playing a part, and he does a very good job of it. It's from the producers of Mandy, which is fucking amazing. <laughs> if you haven't seen Mandy, stop the video and go watch Mandy. It's a good fucking movie. I really like it. Color Out of Space is a little slower, a little more toned down compared to Mandy. But, I don't know, it's still fun. Um, fuck, uh, Tommy Chong's in it. This is the best Tommy Chong performance. This is the best I've ever seen Tommy Chong. I love him. I love his character in this movie so fucking much. It's beautiful. Uh, adaptation of an H.P. Lovecraft story. Um, one of the better... Lovecraft adaptations I've seen. It's no Reanimator, but Reanimator's not super Lovecraftian, honestly, which is maybe why it works so well. Like it's it's less of a Lovecraft story than usual, so it's easier to adapt to film. Yeah, Color Out of Space. It's fun. It's interesting. There's some not very good effects in it. Um, I don't think it's gonna be for everyone, but like. If you're into horror movies, um, or, or like 
just just looking for like a good HP Lovecraft adaptation. Yeah, Color Out of Space, it's a good one. It's from a like a kind of popular horror director from like the 90s and he he tried to do an adaptation of Island of Dr. Moreau and it like fell apart on him and he hasn't directed since. This is his first movie since like the mid 90s. Um I gotta review that Island of Dr. Moreau movie. Because it's, like, it's a funny movie. It's it's bad. It's very funny. There's a lot of stuff to make fun of. And it's one of those movies with a great story behind it. And you guys know I love a bad movie with a good story behind it. So, I, <laughs> Island of Dr. Moreau, definitely on the two-review list. Um, Color Out of Space. I enjoyed it. It's very... Like, there, there's stuff about it that kind of reminds me of, like, The Thing. But that's because The Thing is very Lovecraftian, so... It works. I liked it. I enjoyed it. This next one is debatable about whether or not it's a movie. It's Live from the Space Stage. Uh, a documentary about the Star Wars-themed Disney band Hylax. And it, it is a feature-length movie. Um, with very good production value, um, but it was just uploaded to YouTube. It was produced by the guy who makes Defunct Land, Kevin Perger. If you guys don't watch Defunct Land, it's fucking amazing. Like, of all of the, like, Disney theme park channels, Defunct Land is head and shoulders above the rest. I love Defunct Land. <laughs> so he produced it, someone else made it, and... It's really good. It's a really interesting documentary. And it's all on YouTube for free. Um, I could link to it right here. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. It's, it depends on how lazy I am. But yeah, it's a really interesting documentary about a really interesting topic. Um, just like this Star Wars... Thi but like, like just legally distinct enough. Because Disney didn't own Star Wars at the time. This was the 80s. It's like this this legally distinct but still very Star Wars rock band. And it's it looks cool. It looks really fucking cool. I wish I could have seen it. Like like concerts I wish I could have been at. Hylex. I, I that's like top ten. Um nowhere near number one. There's a lot of classic bands I'd like to see. But Hylex I like, I'd, I'd be interested in seeing. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's it's an interesting documentary on a crazy topic. Go watch it. <laughs> and of course, my number one movie of the year, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, new Charlie Kaufman film, really shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who's been watching my channel a while. Adaptation is my favorite movie. I love Charlie Kaufman. I love everything he makes. This is probably my least favorite Kaufman project. It's still great, let me be clear. I still really like it. But as compared to his other movies, uh, it's it's not as easily accessible. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a lot weirder. It's a lot more... What's the word I'm looking for? Surreal? Surreal, maybe? A lot more... It's, it's not as straightforward as his other movies. Because even, like, his movies are always weird. His movies are always a little strange. Even, uh, like, Synecdoche, New York is a very surreal movie. But I think that one's a lot easier to figure out than uh, I, I'm thinking of ending things. Which, like, it's not a bad thing that it's sort of inaccessible. Like, you know, it's a movie that gives you stuff to think about. I appreciate that. But it, it, it's certainly not going to be for everyone the way, like, some of his other movies, I'm like, this is great. Everyone could watch this and enjoy this. Um, I, I don't feel the same with I'm Thinking of Ending Things. There's a very specific audience for this movie. It's also not as funny as his other movies. Like, Charlie Kaufman does not get enough credit for how funny he is. He is a very funny writer. Thinking of Ending Things is not that funny. It's, like, there's moments of comedy to it, but it's it's much less funny than his other films. 
But those 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 are my two big complaints. Just just like it's a lot more surreal, a lot more disconnected than his other movies, and it, and it's not as funny as his other movies. It's still fucking brilliant. It's still a great movie. Um, lots to think about. Lots of stuff going on in that movie. Uh, my friend Michael, uh, also a big Charlie Kaufman fan, we talked for like an hour <laughs> about like what we think's going on in that movie, what the movie is about, and and we 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 were pretty much on the same page. So it's not like that out there, but it's you know there's stuff to talk about. It's it's a it's a smart movie. It's it's you know it's Charlie Kaufman. It's if you like Charlie Kaufman movies, here's a Charlie Kaufman movie. It's great. I love it. Best movie I saw all year, which is not saying much. I did not see very many movies, but still, great movie. I didn't get to Soul is reviewing really well, which I thought was odd because it's a Pixar movie, and between you and me, Pixar has not consistently put out good movies since, like, Toy Story 3. You know, they had they had Inside Out, and some people liked Coco. I thought it was okay. It's better than most of what their other what what they make usually, but not 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 that good. But they haven't consistently put out good stuff since Toy Story three. But then I saw Soul was directed by Pete Doctor, who directed Inside Out, and I'm like, all right, maybe that's why it's reviewing so well. Pete Doctor knows what he's doing, because <laughs> he also he directed. Up, and I think also Monsters, Inc. I'm, I might be wrong about one of those. He definitely directed at least one of those. I think he directed both. Pete Doctor's the best guy working at Pixar right now. That's just the long and short of it. So, I need to watch Soul, didn't watch Soul. I didn't watch The Hunt, which I wanted to, because uh, it's directed by Homestar Runner creator Craig Zobel. Rip in peace Flash. Um... I don't just want to watch it because he created Homestar Runner. He also made a movie called Compliance that I really liked. So I'm I'm interested to see what else he's doing. Um, and I, I heard fairly positive things about The Hunt. I think it, it's probably... I feel like it's going to be a film I like, but not like love. You know? Didn't get to watch it, though. Um, I think those are the only two I really missed out on this year. Um, other than, like, you know, there's probably a bunch of indie films and foreign films that, like, hit the, the Sundance and all, like, the online, uh, the, the virtual film festivals that I didn't get to see. There's, there's probably a bunch of, like, stuff I won't hear about for two or three years. This is kind of an episode of Matt Presents. I didn't I didn't have movies to talk about cuz last time it was Christmas. Um I did ask what was your favorite 2020 movie? Lino was the only response. He said A Ghost Waits, which he saw at Fright Fest. And yeah, that's probably the type of movie I'm not going <laughs> to hear about until like well after its release. Um uh, Ghost Waits on my watch list, I'll see what it's about. Seems interesting. So, I, I recorded a 2020 wrap-up video, and I didn't like it, so I kind of just deleted it. But the one part of it I, I wanted to bring back for this video, I, I put some thank yous at the end of that one, and I, I want to say thank you again here. Thank you... To you, my viewers, you make this, you make doing YouTube so much more interesting, so much more fun. It's, you know, it's something I do because I enjoy it, and I'm glad someone else enjoys what I make. Um, and, and a sincere thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Um, it's not a lot of money, but it helps. It's there. I'd, I'd rather have something than nothing. I also want to say thanks to my friend John from Homeless Movies. Um, he, he's made some cameos on my... Ch he made a cameo on my channel this year. And also I made a joke about his review of Gun Self-Defense for Ladies. 
and I sort of, I hit him up on Twitter. I'm like, hey, I'm doing this joke about your review. I uh, hope you don't mind. And he's like, oh yeah, you want me to send you the file? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> so he just, he sent me like the full HD version of his video, which I don't think really mattered. I don't think I showed any of him on screen, but still, that was nice of him. I'm glad he did that. Um, and then later on he hit me up and he's like, hey, I'm doing a joke about you in this video. And I, he, he made some joke about like me jerking off to Caligula and he's like, I, I want to make sure that's okay. And I'm like, dude, please, please make a joke about me checking off to Caligula. I'm fine with it. That's hilarious. I'm gl very on brand. And uh, also I want to say a big, big thank you to my friend Michael uh, over at Movie Mackle. Um, we, we did a bunch of videos together this year, um, on both our channels. I think, because, was he in two or three of my videos? I don't know. Two or three of my videos he was in, and I was in, like, a bunch of his videos. It, we had fun making them. It's, I'm in a Discord server with him and a bunch of other people, and it's been a f fucking lifesaver in 2020. Um, so, big thanks to Michael. Um, big thanks to the other people in that, uh, Discord server. They've, they've made this year a lot easier on me. We have a D&D &D podcast if you'd like to watch it. But we do all sorts of dumb shit. Uh, so yes, thank you to all of those people. Thank you to you at home. Um, I hope you have a lovely 2021. Let's move on to the film recommendations for the first movie night of the year. We're going to start off strong with this one. My question for you tonight. What is your favorite non-horror use of horror villains, of horror monsters? Because tonight we have a werewolf action triple feature. Going to start with the Japanese film... Wolf Guy Enraged Lycanthrope with Sonny Chiba. Then we're going to watch the ever-classic Werewolves on Wheels. And we're going to end with a movie I love to bits, Wolf Cop. So I'm going to show those movies tonight, and we'll talk about them next time. Until then, happy 2021.